So welcome back to scriptcastle.com. In the last uh, part, I was talking about David Cronenberg's stereo to begin a, a whole series of talks about uh, his film career going chronologically. And some of the things I, were ta I was talking about is the relationship between stereo and documentary, it being a avant-garde film and so on. And I ended by talking about how Cronenberg is sort of the absence he scientist in the story and how that uh, he has said that we are all kind of scientists and that life is our labor laboratory. And I think uh, one of the things that's worth noting is that to a certain extent Cronenberg has a science background. Um, he says that he went into science because he thought that even though he was really interested in writing, he didn't think writing could, was something that could be taught. But uh, science was something that can only be taught, he thought. To really know science, you need to be instructed in science. Uh, but as it happens, he didn't really hang around the science department because, uh, as he tells us, the way the subject was taught was just way too stifling. Uh, and the people that were detached and distracted and sort of lacking passion, although you can feel in, in many of his films this detached, lacking passion, uh, kind of element but nonetheless he tells us that he was more hanging around in the the art department uh, and one of the things he talks about is how that um, the best scientists in his view really aren't uh, distracted and passionless the best scientists are, are really mad but they're mad in a creative and eccentric way uh, they're more like poets and artists than we tend to give them credit for um, and like poets and artists, they are often very tragically sort of demented figures with all kinds of problems. Um, and, uh, you know, they seem this way to us not because they have the power to experiment with nature and harness its energies in much more con consequential ways than artists, but, you know, scientists really reveal to us, even if they don't mean to, that nature is not a fixed thing. The human body is not a fixed thing. It's not stable, right? Nature and the body are inherently unstable. They're always shifting, always changing. And what science does and what scientists do is they're really revealing that change through an ongoing process of, of redefinition and examination uh, that basically charts transformation. Uh, and I think we've all heard this concept that how we study a thing changes the thing that we study. And I think that in stereo, Cronenberg's really focusing on this issue and throughout his career. Um, so I think the last thing to really go over it, uh, in talking about stereo uh, is that even in as early as 1969, we were really seeing Cronenberg's major themes from the get-go. And what are some of these themes? Well, we have very, very clinical visuals. They're sort of brutalist, uh, brutalist architecture on the outside and the interiors are filled with laboratories and surgical spaces. Um, and you know, it's worth pointing out that in these spaces, uh, a lot of people are seen to be sort of stripping out of their clothes. And these are images that we'll see several times, stripping in a sort of medical atmosphere. Shivers has this and Dead Ringers, uh, among other films. And I think the real point here is that, sh that science is shown to be something that's erotic and along with this uh, eroticism of science, we have a, a medicalization of sex. Sex is something medical. Um, it's an experiment, right? Uh, another thing we have is themes of addiction. And in this case, telepathy is shown as a kind of addiction uh, and a relationship to addiction. And we'll see this connection between telepathy and drugs in scanners and uh, the use of, of ephemeral to sort of control and focus. Uh, the scanning uh, ability and turn it into a technique really and there's a relationship between drugs and telepathy and naked lunch and to a certain extent the twins and dead ringers have a telepathic connection and this is really exacerbated by their addiction to drugs that they try to uh, get in sync with each other through uh, uh, taking the same chemicals uh, one thing I find really unusual in stereo is this kind of uh, flamboyance there's like a medieval look to things, sometimes a Victorian, um, especially in the clothes. Now, the, the medieval look will come in again, uh, particularly in Videodrome. Uh, Professor Oblivion has a certain kind of desk, and there's certain kinds of uh, bad guys that stand behind him and 
it takes on this kind of medieval look and I think it comes back in History of Violence in Richie Cusack's uh, mansion um, but in stereo there's something really strange about the clothes people wear they're, they're wearing frocks and someone has a double breasted suit and uh, uh, the main actor he's wearing a cape and he has this cane with a silver top I'm not really sure what to make of it but it sort of reminds me of the cover of uh, Sgt. Pepper uh, there's this kind of taste in hippieism for uh, for these uh, older styles of dress from the Victorian era and the Romantic poet era. Uh, but carrying on, uh, other themes that are going to be really, really crucial to the Cronenberg canon are like the cold rationality of science coming up against certain passions, certain biological needs for sex and for love, and not just love in a traditional sense, but love in in alternative senses. Cronenberg says, you know, the idea that there's only one kind of love is absurd. Um, and this kind of quest for passion in science, uh, it's so strong that it not only redefines the borders of rationality, but it really goes some distance toward destroying rationality, showing rationality as something that's quite constructed, and it's constructed in a way that's weak and easy to topple over. And uh, if you look at another lecture I've done, I talk uh, at length about rationality versus passion as one of the fundamental uh, themes of uh, Western narrative. Uh, another major thing we see already this early in Cronenberg's career is the idea of nervous systems intertwining with one another. The idea that individuals are not stable entities, they're always subject to change, to remixing, uh, falling apart and being rebuilt at, at every moment uh, and this sub being subject to change is like really particular in their sexual identity which is already biologically fluid but it's thematically and symbolically fluid as well and totally instable always subject to change always undergoing mutation and redefinition and I think the most important thing is that it's always escaping our control and we always have an impulse to try to control it no matter the cost so I'll leave you uh, with a great line from Burroughs, which is this. Burroughs says at a certain point that control seeks to control control. And you can puzzle over that. I think that it's the ultimate theme throughout Cronenberg's canon. So until next time, uh, we will talk about crimes of the future. So take care. <laughs>